another glorious day or night in Nashville. What a great audience, too. We, we've had great audiences all week. For comparison, here's the Gutfeld crowd. Huh? Look at that. All right. All right. Shut up! Shut up! Knock it off! And here's tonight's audience for Jimmy Kimmel. Meanwhile, here's what you're missing on Colbert by watching Gutfeld. Come with me and you'll be in a world of reconciliation. It's our sole remedy except for pure intoxication. You know, that's not a comedy show. That's Sesame Street for Democrats. <laughs> His show is becoming so sad, I have to watch old Yeller to cheer up. <laughs> but our show is different. Look who we have on tonight. Emily Campagna. Yeah. <laughs> and boy, boy, did she get into the swing of things in Nashville. Uh, right here. Oh, okay, only about five more steps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm locking the door. Okay. You know, you, th you don't stop at the hotel bar when you get off the flight. Uh. You just go straight to the hotel. <laughs> and Kat survived another night on the town. We had a heck of a time, however, getting her back into the hotel room. Thanks for the help, guy You're with the not. phone. <laughs> Bravest man I've ever seen. Cat, stop mixing tequila with Red Bull. All right. <laughs> but I'm also glad that your family made it to the show. I think we have a picture. I knew, uh, <laughs> I knew those new no bail laws would finally come in handy. <laughs> and Joe Mackey is here. Good to see he made it. This is him. My panel. And of course, finally, there is Tyrus. He's here tonight. Here he is. Here he is enjoying a night on the town. <laughs> Not getting the deposit back. So to the news. The Center for Disease Control is at it again. Yesterday, these bozos issued an urgent health advisory for pregnant people to get the COVID vaccine. It was so urgent, they forgot there's a name for what kind of people get pregnant. To them, it's not pregnant women, it's pregnant people, which include men as well as women and probably some woodland creatures and a box of frogs. And so we're supposed to believe these are medical experts, right? Hell, Jill Biden's more of a doctor than these asses. <laughs> How can they completely erase the biological differences between men and women? Hell, I've done that, but never intentionally. I was at a party, it was drunk, and I didn't see the Adam's apple. <laughs> because of the height difference. So think about this. What if you were a hardcore feminist who worked decades fighting for the rights of women? You know, like Gloria Steinem or Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> and after you've made all this headway, you find that the word woman is considered offensive. Yep, now anyone can get pregnant, right, crazy lady? We know people get pregnant and not just women. But I hear people over and over and over again say women get pregnant. But that's excluding people that should be a part of this conversation. She's talking about pregnant men, because that's a thing. But I'm sorry, a guy should never be confused about whether his cramps are from labor pains or the chili he ate. 
Uh, ma'am, please remove your jock strap before it snaps the gynecologist in the face. <laughs> so how did we get this far? Well, it's not on you or me. It's on the cowards, the bureaucrats, the experts, the media wusses who are so scared of being called out on Twitter that they happily throw an entire gender under the bus. Oh, we better not offend the activist class. So it's not women who can get pregnant, but men too. So let's just say people. So if men can't get pregnant, what can women do that they couldn't do in the past few hundred thousand years, right? Hey, ladies, don't forget to get your prostate checked. <laughs> After that, please turn your head and cough. Ew. Ew. The only good I see coming out of this is that men will finally know the pain of childbirth, and women will finally know that getting hit in the balls hurts a lot more. True story. Thank you. Me, I can't wait to give birth. I just have to find out where I put the umbilical cord. I think it's in the drawer where I keep my old cable wires and phone chargers. <laughs> But the woke aren't just going after women. They're coming after your ponies. My little pony, to be exact. Finally, some horses they do like. Remember those animated jerks that they have the color of Pepto-Bismol and the charm of a head wound? According to the New York Times, the latest new generation of the My Little Pony movie stages a political awakening about tolerance, prejudices, and even fascism. You know, the kind of hijinks that kids really love if your kid wants to be an Antifa. Apparently, the wokeaholics are coming from all sides, from the medical bureaucracy to the entertainment industry, all aimed at turning you into a mindless, docile drone. Here's a short clip. Hi, new friend. Unicorn attack! <laughs> Is every pony playing hide and seek? I see you! <laughs> well, I think I just killed a million brain cells. Just a million more, and I can work at CNN. <laughs> Watch out, Cuomo. So in the flick, the enlightened heroine, Sunny Star Scout, crashes a demonstration led by a defensive weapons manufacturer. Yes, because defensive weapons are wrong. Unlike offensive weapons, which I assume is Joy Behar's voice. <laughs> it was once deemed too cruel for Gitmo. Anyway, the movie hero assembles an eclectic team of progressive youngsters to fight misinformation with references to American politics. Worse, worse. Talk about cultural appropriation. Who are playing these ponies? People, not ponies. I thought this was 2020. So we went to a pissed off My Little Pony for comment. I've been in this business 25 years. None of the actors voicing these characters are actual ponies. What the f Vanessa Hudgens is not a pony. Ken Jong is not a pony. This is Auntie Equine and I will sue every one of these mother Sorry about that. Uh, maybe this show should have come with a trigger warning. Brilliant. Yeah, trigger warnings. Remember how big those were, the written warnings to alert students of problematic material? And I'm not talking about a wool Speedo. <laughs> what a bad purchase. <laughs> Recently, colleges have embraced trigger warnings to keep students safe from trauma, which meant banning harmful phrases like killing it or take a stab at it or your expensive degree in women's studies is useless. <laughs> but now researchers find that trigger warnings don't lessen negative reactions. Instead, they can make it worse for people with PTSD. So will that put an end to trigger warnings? Of course not. They'll just issue a trigger warning for a trigger warning. And then there will be a trigger warning for a trigger warning for a trigger warning. Which makes sense. For one thing, everyone should get a trigger warning before they see this. Oh. My eyes. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guests. The court asked her to stop leading cheers during the death penalty cases. Co-host of Outnumbered, Emily Campagno. He's as relaxing as underwear filled with ice water. Comedian Joe Mackey. Her husband believes in good communication, like mouthing the word help. Fox News contributor Cat Tiff. And pickup trucks are his flip flops. My massive sidekick and the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus.
So, uh, Joe, good to see you. Good to see you, Greg. I love the shirt. Thank you, sir. No members only jacket tonight. It's too hot in this town. Oh, you know it. <laughs> I expect to see you shirtless by the end of this show. That's that'll happen. I know. So when you decide to become pregnant, Joe, <laughs> do you plan to get the vaccine and take the advice of the CDC? Greg, if I could make up how I reproduce, why would I pick pregnancy when there's binary fission? <laughs> That's where I can eat a lot more food till I get so fat that I split into two comedian Joe Mackey's. You actually did research for that. I so, so you gain weight and then you divide? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> too many trips to the catering tray uh, this, this week, Greg, so, uh, I, you know, I, I think that uh, this story tells us that we're going to have to come up with our own animated pony propaganda at this point because everything's becoming political, even animated ponies. Exactly. Fox News has to come up with its own My Little Pony. <laughs> yes. You, I, you could be one of the ponies. I would love to be. A, a you're almost there. You have a very pony kind of, you know, you're like a little pony. <laughs> I have to be very careful about what I'm about to say. Um, can you, like, isn't it hard to take advice from, okay, the CDC, like, how can you take medical advice from people that deny biological realities? That's the hardest thing. People complain about people being skeptical about vaccines. Listen to these idiots right now. They're poisoning their own messaging. There's not enough time in this show to play a montage of them going back on what they've said, going back on the science that they deem to represent. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I absolutely agree with you that they've lost their credibility entirely. But can we go back to My Little Ponies for a second? Sure. Okay, so... <laughs> Why not? It's your show. To me. <laughs> exactly. So they ruined what really was the best thing ever. My Little Ponies is the best thing ever. And their tagline was just love and friendship, right? What, what do you need more than just love and friendship? Now, I, I, I didn't even, I had to, I couldn't memorize this. A political awakening about tolerance, prejudice, even fascism. Yes. So once again, literally, the, the narrative that they're pushing is that the most dangerous thing in your neighborhood is the patriot flying the American flag. Like, never mind the social media companies eroding your child's sense of self-worth or the elected officials that are keeping big tech companies protected while they mine your data or like cyber hackers stealing your finances or China invading us at every turn. None of that stuff matters except for fascism mm -hmm. in the form of ponies, right? And the other, the most important thing I learned in that article, though, is that the plural of Pegasus is Pegasi. I know. I know. I didn't know that. What's a, but, but, but then unicorn is, uni, should it be unikai? Potentially. I don't know. This is a very strange route you've taken me. Kat, uh, were you a My Little Pony fan? Look, Greg, I could answer that, uh, but I'm not going to. Why? Um, <laughs> instead, I would like to just have a chat with you. Uh, yes. Um, you know, so in your monologue, you called me a booze bag. <laughs> um, as usual, you like to show the video. That was an alligator, not me, by the way, guys. Uh, made fun of my family, and none of it's true, but I have obtained some actual footage of your actual family, your sister and her husband be in Nashville, and they're behaving very badly. Look at this. Look at this. They are alone on the dance floor, and they are air drumming ferociously. Yes. Nobody air drums unless they've had at least 17 beers yes. beforehand. Okay, look at that. Oh, and the air guitar, too. He's brother-in-law's got a whole air band, except the instruments aren't there, right? Just like no one's on the dance floor with them. Look at that. That's his actual family. That's real. Oh, and look, look at this. Vandalism. <laughs> yes. Vandalism. That is your sister engaging in vandalism of this very bar. So you can call it whatever you want with your fake little videos, but it looks like you're the one that hangs out with all the booze bags, and you're from a crime family. <laughs> By the way, that was actually my family. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, their daughter kept sending me these videos. I don't know if she was a, it was a cry for help or she was proud. Was business as usual. Yeah. All right, final word to you, Tyrus. You got kids, lots of kids. Yeah, I'm sure you have a, you've stepped on a few My Little Ponies. <laughs> I've stepped on a few kids. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a horrible parent. I make sure my kids watch what I like. We watch Looney Tunes and the Three Stooges, and my daughter's working on this move right now. So <laughs> we really don't have time for my little woke pony. So we're going to stick to this and that and giving your best friend a dynamite stick and blowing him up. And, so 
it's just really as as a parent, I'm like first of all, I'm not sure what fascism is or means, so I'm not gonna have my kids do it. And those shows are boring anyways because they take all the humor out of it. So we have My Little Ponies, and but we also have Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. And guess what happens to the My Little Ponies? They get T-Rexed in the middle of nowhere, or <laughs> T-Rex person eats the pony. So that's where we're going to stick with it. Leave the kids alone. Leave the kids alone. All right. That's a message. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.